Welcome to this edition of the Kingdom Advancement Podcast as we hear another sermon from Pastor Judy. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you that you will inhabit the praises of your people, Lord, that as we listen to this sermon and take notes, that even throughout the week we will be, you will expound upon what you, what we have heard, that you would illuminate both in this time we hear this sermon and in this week, the words which we have heard into our hearts. In Jesus' name, I thank you that the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing asunder to the joints and the marrow. And that it will do that what you intended it to when you sent it forth. May there be exorcisms, inner healing, deliverance, just anything that people need. I also ask that you will bring everyone that needs to know you to to the kingdom. Whether they know you with head knowledge or don't know you at all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yep. I put those songs on in a celebration for for the graduation from the School of Exorcism. Well, honey, I, I think... That is wonderful, and I think we just really need. Great. Oh, hi, Miss Blake. Come in. Hello, everybody. Hi. How are you doing? Thinking about where are, where, 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 where are you? You're going over there. Just thinking about you. Good or bad? Good. Always good, 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 good. Few and far between think good of me. Oh, that's not true. No, that's not true. You're a mighty woman of God. <laughs> uh, in fact, I was going to ask anybody here, has anybody heard from Miss Blake? Like, yeah, I, 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 I saw her this week. Yeah. Not really calling, but texting. So. Yeah, yeah. I, <clears throat> you have a testimony, so we, let us hear it. I'm here. That's the testimony. Praise yeah. God. <clears throat> oh, I was so sick. Only two and a half dates. Wow. Went shopping Saturday. And I said, "Eh, we need to go home. Got home and it's like, okay, just a little under the weather. I woke up that Sunday morning, actually during the night. Man, I was sick. I was sick. (laughs) Wow. But I couldn't breathe. I could not breathe and had a high temperature. I was running 104 and I couldn't breathe. My heart rate went down. Normally I run 120 to 70, which that's normal for me. I don't know what's normal. My heart rate went down from 120 over 70 my heart rate went down to 67 over 40. Oh my wow. Lord, girl. I couldn't walk across the room. I'm like, I can't move, I'm gonna pass out. Things aren't functioning here and I yeah. can't breathe and I don't have air and my heart's not working and blah, 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 blah. I said, you wanna go talk? Nope, you just leave me here. If I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die in good company. Not among strangers, okay? <laughs> Anyway, I didn't, and I'm here. Praise God. I'm here. Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. But for two days, I couldn't function. I, I didn't eat for two days. I couldn't keep water down. I, I was done. Damn it, I was. Wow. I was. That's. And I was Sunday and Monday. Tuesday, I was better. Thursday, we went out and cross country and did shopping that we didn't get to do on Saturday. So, praise God. Amen. And I, I've been in for longer just for whatever 
Yeah. You know, just to be sure it was all gone, whatever it was. Right. But yeah, it was, you know. I tell you what. The enemy is going about seeking whom he may devour. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, and that's, uh, and as a matter of fact, I was going to minister on fear today, a little bit on fear. I went over to um, <coughs> Southside to Brother Alphonse's church, and Bob Cosby, who goes over there, he, he was ministering today, and he, he was ministering on anxiety. Uh. And I thought, well, isn't that amazing? I think the Lord is trying to get the body of Christ to the place right. that uh, we're going to learn to trust God. It doesn't matter if it hair, lips, every cow in Texas. I mean, that's the, the wall. Yeah. And, you know, when you, you think about the strategy of the enemy, he never changes his strategy. It's the same 076 every time, and humanity still falls for it. Because yep. we are not rooted and grounded in the Word of God. Right. And so, you know, I was thinking, you look at, look at our whole society. I mean, the world is full of fear. America is full of fear. If you watch anything uh, on the news or any other media source, it's all fear-driven. Uh, you know, and this, this thing with Putin and the Ukraine and all that, this just yada, 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 yada. It's all just constantly going on. And fear he's going to set off a nuke or fear somebody's going to set off a nuke. And, you know, it's, it's like when the enemy came in to Adam and Eve and, and caused them to uh, disobey God, immediately the fear came in to Adam and Eve and they started hiding from God. And that, has, that, that strategy hasn't changed at all. Okay. If the enemy can get our focus divided, if he can get us thinking on the things that are going to destroy or could happen, might happen, we don't know what's going to happen, right. but if we meditate on that long enough and think that it could very well happen, you know, most of the stuff we worry about and all that never comes up, never right. happens. Amen. You know, but think about when your focus, the Word of God says perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. So we haven't grown up into maturity. We haven't come to the place where we realize that we are the power source. We are the authority that Jesus Christ gave us that in the earth. And so think about this just a moment. The, the torment. Fear. He that fears, because fear has torment. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, you know, I've heard uh, a lot of preachers say, well, worry is sin. Which it is. But fear is sin too. That's what I say. Fear should be sin too. When you think about that, and that's the root cause. You're talking about demonic activity and oppression. Fear is that root cause that brings forth torment and yep. worry and sickness and disease and heart attack and every, everything else that is going on is because, first of all, the root of it is fear. Yeah, I thought of that when I was so sick. Yeah. In the very beginning, and I just said, you know, and Ed was concerned. I mean, he was by my side the whole time. And, and I, <laughs> bless his heart, he's like, I mean, literally right there, you know, hoping I'm taking another breath and hoping, you know, because I'm not, I'm not breathing right there right. and all of this kind of stuff. So it was a real test of faith for both of us, but I kept telling him, I'm going to be all right, you know. Yeah. Just keep praying, I'm going to be all right, you know, and had to come against that negative. Right. And yeah. how much time do we all spend at different times for different reasons? The time that is wasted fearing, the time that is wasted worrying, right. the yeah. time that should be spent, could be spent on, in the Word, with the Word, with God, in prayer, believing instead of using that time that just exasperates any condition. Right. You know, right. Fear, will, fear will grow if you concentrate on it, but worry will grow if you concentrate on it. Right. So I refuse to, you know, do all that. <laughs> in fact, Fortunately, I thought, I'm glad we have text messages 
because I didn't have to talk to me either one of my sisters for two and a half days. I'm not telling them I'm sick. I'm yeah. not going to do it. I'm not going to tell anybody outside of these four walls that I'm sick. And at one point in time, or a couple times, I said, that's the, Ed said, well, do you want to take your call? No. Somebody sent you a text. Okay. He had to answer my text because I couldn't even, I wasn't functioning. He said, well, they just say I'm busy. Right. You know, and that usually calms them down for a few hours. They got a text from me. <laughs> yeah. And I said, I'm not telling them. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I, you know. Yeah. You know, but it really, I, I reached out to Cheryl saying that, you know, I, I need some. Yeah, we've been praying for her. Yeah, we've been praying all this time. Yeah. 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 So I appreciate that for everybody because it was, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you don't have half your heart rate and sky high fever and, it, you know. Can't breathe. Yeah. Yeah. That's that what's that scary last weekend. sometimes. Hmm? Is that last weekend you had all that? Two yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two weeks, weeks ago. ago. Two weeks ago today. Yeah. 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 Well, think about, I mean, you know, if, if, we're, if we're going to start as a body of believers in this earth discerning, and I believe the Lord is going to have to quicken our discernment so that we know what's going on, because the enemy of our soul has been around since creation, and he knows everything and how to manipulate and how to control and, and do all that. But think about the strategy that he uses, because if fear has torment which it does, takes away our peace, takes away our faith, takes yep. away our belief, mm -hmm. our trust. Right. And then the word of God says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you're, if you're full of the fear and the torment and the anxiety, and that's what you're filling your mind with, all of the doubt, because you know how the enemy comes when you're especially under a heavy attack like that, and he comes and those thoughts that come to your mind, you know, oh God, am I going to die? Oh God, is you know, is this going to lift off? Uh, you know, yes. what's all of that? And, and you meditate on it, and you think on it, and you feel those those uh, symptoms. As you think, so are you. Mm -hmm. And you know, so that's the strategy. So, what does God want us to do in to combat that, to cause that to be defeated and and not take place in our lives? What? 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 Anybody got an answer? I think we have to just be, be vigilant or vigilant. You have to be vigilant, yes. And you have to change your focus. Yep. Yeah. You have to change what you're thinking about. You have to change your concentration. You have yep. to change uh, the, the, the repeat mind thing that's going on in your mind. You have to pull that down, pulling down those strongholds and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That takes an act of deliberate will and strength and faith to do that and being in the Word of God. Yeah. Because, and that comes from seasoned people that are mature in the things of God. That yeah, are, right. We have to stand on God's promise. Right. Yeah. By His stripes we are healed. Absolutely. We pray constantly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because the Word of God said, He that is skillful... And the word of God is on strong meat. But a baby still is drinking the milk, you know, and the milk of the word uh, can nourish you, but it doesn't, it doesn't give you that strength that you're going to have to have. You've got to know the word of God, and we've got to understand that what comes out of our mouth is going to manifest. And there's always an attack from oh, yeah. outside sources. Oh, yeah. You can build your faith up in the first phone call. Yeah. Well... And you know what? And people mean well. That's they the thing. do. They mean well. But if you're a person of faith and you're standing on the word of God, uh, you know, that first thing that, that comes out, well, you need to go to the doctor or you need to do this or, you know, yeah. you really sound bad and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, because people are concerned and that's the natural way of showing concern. Right. As Christians, we need to learn to respond to other people differently. Right. So that we're building them up. Because when you're ill and you hear these things and you're standing on faith and, you know, my sisters mean well, 
And in fact, the one stands on faith all the time. She had COVID and she said, you know, I'm not doing anything and I'm not going to the hospital and they're not getting a hold of me. And, you know, she overcame without any medications at all. And yet I knew if I talked to her out of her concern for me. Right. You know, so she has faith for herself, but not knowing where you, your faith lies. Exactly. And that concern. So instead of being able to say to me, I stand in faith believing with you, or I'll pray for you, or, you know, God is your healer, or whatever she could have said, she would have said, you need to go to the doctor. Yeah. And I'm like, I I know her that well. And yet, so we have to learn to respond. And I know when I responded, when I responded to her when she was so sick, I kept telling her, I'm praying for you. I, I'm standing <coughs> with you. Right. Other parts of her family were saying, Mom, you need to go to the hospital. Mom, you're going to die. You're going to yada, 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 yada. Yeah. And she would call me and say, I just got bombarded. My daughter is saying that. I said, no, I'm standing in yeah. faith, you know. You got the faith to stand, uh, stand with you, and so we need to respond that way. You know, and not that I wasn't concerned for it, no. because I was, but. But you know what, it's a training. It's a training that we really need to come in focus mm-hmm. with to, to respond how Christ would respond. Exactly. You yeah. know, it, and that's the thing, rather than respond by the natural and by the flesh, to respond how Christ would respond. So, but I think a lot of it too is because of our foundational beliefs. Jesus taught his disciples to pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. All right, that's that in the nutshell is the whole walk that we walk in is kingdom principles and kingdom life and kingdom living. Well, in his kingdom, you know, there's there's no sickness, no disease, there's no war, there's no poverty, there's none of that. But to, to separate from the natural realm and come into this place of the Spirit of God and, and always be in tune with what God is saying mm-hmm. is a disciplined walk. Yeah. <clears throat> and not a whole lot of, of, you know, I mean, it's hard to live that 24-7 if you're taking care of business and you got things to do. But I think the Lord is teaching us and he's training us that, you know, we have got to... If, we, if we're going to really walk it, if we want to enjoy the life that he has for us, I mean, he can come and take us out of here today. Praise God. Wouldn't that be wonderful? <clears throat> but I'm not sure that that's his plan. Well, that's always been my thought when I'm fighting a physical battle. Is, um, if this is my time, and I don't, you know, <coughs> I didn't believe it was then, and I haven't believed it in right. situations. But if you have no fear of death, there's no fear. Right, right. You know? <clears throat> and you can overcome easier for me if I have no fear of death. Right. You know, this is just symptoms. Mm-hmm. And if I'm going to <coughs> the Lord, so be it. I won't have these symptoms. Or I'm going to overcome these symptoms right. with the Lord. So there's no no fear in there. <clears throat> Not that I haven't had fear in other parts of my life, but no fear in that, in my physical well-being. Well, I believe that. And of course, the last enemy to be overcome is death. You know, that's yeah. it, death is an enemy. I mean, I, are we all going to die? Well, we will. Jesus doesn't come eventually. But we need to embrace life. And embrace the quality that God has given us. So, you know, the world is is sick and diseased and fearful. And they've got to have an answer and a witness for something that's different. Right. Because if the church operates in the flesh like the world operates, they don't have anything else to, to, you know, look for. Or try to want, even, if we can't do any difference. Uh, Go with me to, um, let me see. 
let's let's check a few scriptures. Let's go with Exodus fifteen twenty six. Exodus fifteen twenty six. Fifteen twenty six. Wouldn't it be great to be able to live in a, a realm where we don't have to always try to be well, but that we stay healthy? Yeah. Huh? And I believe the Lord would have us to do that. You know, there, there's, you read an instance of Jesus being tired, but we've never read in, the, in any of the scriptures where he was sick. May I say something? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. You know, I believe that a part of it is confessing the word, but I believe it has to do with your diet and exor- how much you exercise and things. Go, you know, and yes, going to the doctor. You need to go to the doctor when you're sick. Just a disclaimer for those that are on the podcast. Mm-hmm. And, but also concerning fear, you know, I've been I've been doing this advanced academy, and they said he said that, you know, not that every mental disorder is demonic but he said in you know in, in he said expect to look for if you have someone with an anxiety disorder that you're that you're doing deliverance on expect to look for the spirit of fear mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. Uh, that's the root spirit yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and and a lot of it you know, I, you're, what you're saying is true. I mean, if we're anxious all the time about every little thing, yeah, then you need to check and find out. You know, what what's promoting that? What what is what is the uh, source of this anxiety or the source of this torment? And it's always going to be fear because that's the spirit that dwells there with that kind of stuff. But um, you know, I, I truly believe that. Uh, the Lord wants us to live in peace, free from the worries and the fears and the cares of this world. And, I, and you, if you're living in the world, you've got to live above the world in the realm of the spirit. Because if you're looking at yeah. everything in the natural that's going on, it robs you of every bit of peace, every bit of joy. Uh, because they're always, what if? You know, and planning on, planning on everything to get blown up and then planning on everything to be, you know, uh, destroyed. And that kind of thing. And the only thing I can say about that, if it happens, praise God, we'll be with Jesus. Just, you know? Right. In a heartbeat, in an instant, we'll be there. Okay. Uh, Exodus fifteen twenty six. It says, uh, And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all of his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. And the Old Testament is is there, conditional, the healing. If you keep the commandments, if you if you listen to what I say and you obey what I say, then you're not going to walk in these diseases that came upon the Egyptians and the things that happened there. Well, now we have changed covenants. And it isn't a perfecting of the law that we have to do or a keeping of the law. It's by faith. And if we realize that Jesus Christ took our sicknesses, bore our diseases, that by the, his blood, everything that was done, uh, the sin and all of that was, was covered and washed away by the blood of Jesus, then now it becomes uh, an act and a, a walk of faith, not a work of works of the law that uh, the Old Testament had. So... If we can come to understand that everything Jesus did was for our good and for our perfection and for was for our healing, it's you know three John two, beloved above all things that you uh, prosper and walk in health even as your soul prospers. That as we take on the the mind and the nature and the attitude of God, and we begin to realize that as He is, so are we in this world. That God wants us to, not to have to fight for health and healing all the time, but to walk in health and healing, to walk being whole, you know, so that we can enjoy our life and enjoy the things that are going on that God has blessed us with. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Okay.
Uh, let's see. Luke 10, 19. I'm going to give you these scriptures because these are ones that you know. But just, just to summarize this up and uh, to try to bring us to a place that when we hear evil reports, we do not fear or cave or give in to those things. But immediately we decree the word of God against it. That, that is our job, is decree the will and the word of God against the evil reports that come. And, and I think what you're saying, Blake, is very good, that God train us as Christians to how, how to respond to somebody that's sick and believe in, for their health and their healing and how to respond to them in a positive note with the word of God. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know? Okay. Uh, Luke 10, 19. He says, I've given you power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall harm you. Uh, all right, that's a promise of God. That's so powerful. So powerful. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 3, 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works within us. That is so powerful. Yep. When we begin to see these things, we're not little peon paupers that are weak and beggarly and sickly and ineffective. We're the power of God in the earth. And that's why the enemy wants to keep us defeated with fear, doubt, and unbelief. Hallelujah. It's up to us to change that. We have to, we'll walk where we want to walk, but it's up to us to change it. In <clears throat> Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, leap not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. It's the trust factor. And worry is sin. Fear is sin. And anxiety is sin. Because all of those things come to the place where we are more uh, moved by what we see and what we feel than we are by what the Word of God has to say. Hallelujah. And then this last one I want to give you is Isaiah 26.3. Isaiah 26, 3, that will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon thee, because he trusteth in thee. Hallelujah. And yeah. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. In the world, world you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And so, you know, it's, it's not a lot today, but I think the Spirit of the Lord, after going south side and listening to... Um, Pastor Bob and Blake's testimony, I think the Lord is, is trying to not just um, prepare us, but he's trying to mature us mm -hmm. and to yeah. get us to the place that we're not always going to be talking the doubt and the fear and the unbelief. Katie? I, I was just pulling my hair back. Oh. <laughs> okay. When I wasn't feeling well, even though a lot of times I could I, ha I didn't have the breath to even talk. Yeah. And, but in my mind, I kept saying to myself, I am an overcomer through Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, right. I am overcoming. I, I am an overcomer. You know, and, um, and I just kept resonating in my mind over and over and over and over. And, you know. Yeah, because as a man thinketh, so is he. Yes. So instead of concentrating on the symptoms, right? It's like, no, I'm an overcomer. I don't care what's going on here. I'm an overcomer. Right. Well, I think when we really begin to realize too that the spirit realm is the power. I mean that that's where you win or lose the battle is in the realm of the spirit and. Um, I don't know. I, I, I know everybody's fighting something, you know. Uh, I've been asking the Lord about this, this stuff that keeps going on with the allergy thing and the, and the snotty nose and the hacking and coughing. So hey, I yeah, think every, A lot of people are suffering from that. Yeah, yeah, I know they are. And, you know, and honestly, I believe a lot of it is weather warfare. I'm, and I know I get this conspiracy pro thing thrown at me, but I don't care. Anytime you see 10, 12 chemtrails in the sky crisscrossing and doing all this, and this stuff they're putting in the sky, and it has an effect on the people. So, you know, so be it as it may, God's still the healer, so. But we're all Isn't overcomers. That's, that's right. That's right. Through Christ Jesus, we that's are right. all overcomers. Well, yep. think about, think about how Jesus walked uh, 
in the supernatural realm against every natural phenomena. You know, you think about it. Uh, still in the storm, mm -hmm. the waves sinking the ship and all of that. No fear, no doubt. Spoke to the waves, spoke to the wind, and went to the other side. And he walked on water. Right. He walked on water. Think about feeding 5,000 people with just a few loaves and a couple of fish. Always getting above walking in the supernatural, regardless of what it looked like in the natural realm. And, you know, I think we've been taught so long, well, that's Jesus, that's not y'all. Jesus could do that, but y'all can't. And so I think we've been taught so much unbelief right. and so much doubt. And so much that if we can't see it, if we, if we don't see it manifesting right away, then it can't be true. Right. You see? And so I think the Lord is really trying to restructure our belief system and our faith mm -hmm. into yeah. the things that we begin to walk in the supernatural realm. Being in tune to what's going on in the realm of the spirit. And if we know the enemy and how he always, his, his MO is the same thing. It's right. always with a sudden fear, you know, always trying to do something to shock you into a place of unbelief or doubt or, mm -hmm. oh, my God, what if, that kind of thing. Um, if we could be aware of that and, and continue to walk in the peace of God and the word of God, we'll see great things happen. I believe that. Right. It will screen what we hear, what we see, what we listen to. Yeah. Those are just Can I say something here about tools of the enemy to bring fear, yeah. doubt, yeah. unbelief. Well, he's done, he's, he's done a really good job. You know, started with the Garden of Eden, and he hadn't quit, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What? Yeah, um, when I started out praying for people, you know, uh -huh. and thinking, you know, God's going to heal them, but God is now showing me that my power, you know, I, and I can see that healing, you know, when it's kind of done, you know. Right. So I, he's working more and more. So, yeah. Well, I think, you know, he's given us knowledge and what to do. And, you know, a lot of times, um, I mean, Jesus had no problem. He healed everybody. You know, there wasn't right. an issue with it. Sometimes, he, he had the anointing without measure. That's it. That's it. And I think sometimes, you know, if, if we're having an issue we keep battling on, it might be that there's something we need to deal with that's hindering the healing. You know? Yeah. So yeah. we don't, you know, that's why we got to check in with the Holy Ghost and see what he's saying to us. Because, you know, if there's an area of unbelief or an area of unforgiveness, a lot of times that's a big hindrance to healing is unforgiveness. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a walk with the Lord that is unique and precise for every individual. Right. And when we begin to realize that, that, you know, my faith isn't where yours is. My walk's not where yours is, but I'm walking on this trail. You're walking in your realm, and we're yeah, all going to yeah. get there. Praise God. When I'm going know. through a struggle, a lot of times, what I guess the Lord is telling me is like, whose report are you going to believe? Yeah. yeah. You know? So it always sets me on the track, you know, the right path. Right. You know? And you just have to have faith and, you know, stand you know, stand it, you know. Well, I believe that, and I honestly, I do think we have to really know that it's the will of the Father for yeah. us to walk in health. And I think a lot of people don't know that. You know, I, I think a lot of people still have suspicions to the goodness of God and mm -hmm. who, to the Word of God. Does God really mean what He says? Right. You know, so I think we have to deal with those areas and overcome those kind of things so that we can... Yeah. Be solid in our faith and know that it is the will of God for us to be well. You know, you know um, I prayed a lot for my healing. Yeah. But God told me um, that I'm here in the park. But I don't quite know what that means yet, you know. He tells me what? That, that I hear God's heart after, you know, I pray. Well, I've been praying for my healing, for my joint. Yeah. But uh, he always reminds me, I hear your heart, Lord. Yeah. But I'm not sure exactly what he means by that. Well, let me tell you something. Sometimes. That he wants to do. 
Sometimes, sometimes pain will put you in a different realm. Yeah. It does. Well, it and it'll put you. I think it sometimes it puts you in a different spiritual realm, and, and I don't think it's necessarily bad. Well, it's, it will. For a Christian, it'll draw you closer to the Lord. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. At least yeah. it should, because yeah. I said at least it should, because you know, and and it's it's hard, but you know, like when I have a bad headache, you know, and I think I'm getting better, but but it. You know, all you think about is the pain. Right, right. And I think, uh, and, and another thing about healing, you know, I we I really don't know. We really don't know all the reasons why people don't get healed. You no, know, we don't know. Only God knows that. Yeah. You know, and that's not up to us to judge that. I think it's up to us to judge whether we know that it's His will to heal. Yeah. And if we're secure in that, then, you know, if, if we're walking through something and it doesn't happen, then that's between us and God, and we're going to have to, yeah. you know, right. figure it out. He'll give us the grace to endure it. Well, he does, and and I, I truly believe, you know, I, I don't know, I just see the heart of the Father when he gave his, the best he could ever give was Jesus Christ, his only son. Mm -hmm. And they were, were willing, Jesus was willing to go, God asked him to come. Jesus was willing, was willing to come and was willing to endure all of the horrors that he endured, not just for us to go to heaven, but for us to walk in health and healing and sound mind and joy and peace, that he provided it all. And the yeah. thing I see with mankind is we keep putting it off. Well, that's a picture of heaven. Heaven has no sorrow, no, no tears, no, no anything. So when we get to heaven, that's gonna be absolutely perfect. Well, it will be, but he died for us to be here on this earth till we get to heaven. That's right. And um, so, you know, I know it's a stretch of faith, and I know it's a lot of people don't believe it, but I do believe yeah. that his will for us is to enjoy the kingdom of God on this earth as it is in heaven. I believe yeah. that. Now, you know, what are we doing to get there? That one that, the real famous one that became wheelchair bound and... Uh, and she couldn't. Uh, Johnny Erickson Tata. Tata. Who? Johnny Erickson Tata. I can't remember her name, but 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 she was real famous, and she said that she asked the Lord why she was like that and why she wasn't getting healed, and He told her that she would not have the relationship with Him if He did that. Yeah. That He had, and so she just. Well, and that. He was. She was content with. That, that answer? Yeah. Well, and that, you know, that... He didn't want to trade that right, for, right. For, 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 for healing. He well, I think when people have that, I don't think there could be anything greater than that kind of a relationship where, yeah. you know, you're sitting at the feet of Jesus. Right. And he speaks to your heart and you have that communion with him. Right. You know, so... Yeah. It's always reaching out to other people not just for us. Right. It's reaching out to the world. It's reaching out to other people. Amen. Standing in the gap with them, for them. Right. You know, testimonies where right. each individual has been through and mm -hmm. what God has done and he's not a receptor of person. He'll do the same for other people and bringing other people in. <coughs> it's not a select group you know, Jesus came for all. Right. right. So unless we're reaching out to all, whoever the all might be that's in our lives or crossing our paths, you know, then that's, I, I believe that's a lot of what we go through and overcome mm -hmm. or what we learn or whatever, whatever it is in, you know, walking with God. That has a greater purpose than just for us, just for me. Right. It's, it's greater, you know, if it touches lives of one more person or two people or right. whatever. That's what we're here for, to walk this earth as Jesus did, as Christians helping others. I want to apologize, everyone, because this was supposed to have been published on Sunday. Um, 
So I want to do, there's something I had forgotten to do at the beginning of this podcast, which was, I did mention Bob Larson as a resource, but uh, there are two more that I recommend. I'm only going to recommend three per podcast. They may be different, but it's just three main resources. And then for those of you that may want more, you can go to my YouTube channel. It's Kingdom Advancement. And... It, it you'll see a cross as the cover photo cover uh, photo, and you can just go to the playlist playlists or no the channels tab and you'll see the channels that I'm subscribed to. Uh, just look strictly at the church ones. But the other two sources I would like to give you are Pastor Vlad Subchuk, and it's got he has a Race to Deliver podcast, and uh, just that. Vlad Subchuk, the YouTube channel, and then he's got Hungry Generation Church YouTube channel, which is called Hungry Generation, and then Hungry Gen Podcast. And then the other one is Isaiah Seldivar. You can just type in, the uh, way I found his podcast was just by typing his name, but you can type in here on, on Spotify, the Revival, Podca- or the Revival Lifestyle with Isaiah Seldivar, and then on YouTube, you can just type his name, and you'll find his youtube channel so uh, if you have any like i said at the beginning if you have any questions comments concerns whatever uh you can just write to us at preach unto them jesus p.o box 7293 edmond oklahoma 73013 or email us through the web link at uh, or the link that you can find at www.stormministries.com. Thank you all very much.